my my first my first time on dialysis. My appointment was um, 9:30 in the morning, and when we pulled up to the hospital, I was I was just afraid, scared. I did I didn't want to do it. So by by the time my my wife talked me into getting out of the truck and encouraged me to go that we needed to do this. Um, I think I got on the chair, it must have been about 11.30. So I was two hours late. Um, it's, it's, it's a scary thing, it's it's frightening at first. You know, just to know that you're gonna get stick with a needle every day, three times a week, not knowing what the outcome is gonna be. Uh, my name is Victor Fendler. I'm chief technician here at Liberty Dialysis, and we're speaking today with Robert Lani, one of our patients. Uh, Robert, when did you first learn that you had to go on dialysis? Uh, about 2009, I started dialysis. Uh, 2007, battling diabetes and things. My doctor told me I had about 10 years before I would end up on dialysis, but uh, the diabetes just kicked in too fast and my kidneys failed. So by 2009, I started. It was in uh, February. How long do you dialyze each day? I come down here to Liberty Dialysis for about four and a half hours a day on uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So this dialysis machine proportions a solution that runs through the artificial kidney and comes into very close proximity to the patient's blood. The solution has uh, the effect of pulling the waste products out of the patient's blood slowly over the course of the dialysis treatment. In addition to that, the dialysis machine also uses a very light negative pressure, pressure or suction to extract excess fluids from the patient's blood. How is it for you coming in and experiencing dialysis three times a week? Uh, is this your preferred option or do you have other options of how you might receive your dialysis? Well, as of right now, dialysis is the only option I have now. And then we go on this waiting list for the transplant center. And as soon as you get chosen for the transplant, um, maybe a kidney, kidney donor or something, you go in for the surgery and things. But as of right now, my life is fine. I, I can still, I still can walk, I can still train. I still spend time with my family, like, like everyday life. And it's just a, it's just a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays just coming in. It's, that's about the only thing, it's just a four and a half hours a day. But other than that, you live, you live life the same. Do you have any diet restrictions that you have to live by? The biggest thing on top of dialysis is our liquid intakes is what we gotta watch. For myself, because my kidney has failed, um, I, I cannot urinate no more. So we, we really need to be strict on the liquid intake because if we come in overloaded, we, we run into other problems. Health reasons, maybe hard time breathing. I might end up in the hospital. The heart, the heart pressure drops or it goes too high. So, but the biggest, the biggest um, challenge for dialysis is is the liquid intake. And how about foods that you like to eat? Is there any foods that you can't have that you'd like to have? Food, the restriction is a lot because we need to watch for the potassium intake, the protein intake. So when you come here, if you, if pray to God that you don't ever need this, but if it's here, if you do need it. They give you diet, they give you dietitian things, what to what you can eat, certain foods you cannot eat, and everything is just in moderation. Hi, my name is Jenny. I'm Robert's wife. Um, the importance of having family support is definitely the key. Um, it's best to be here. Um, he needs that guidance to follow up on his doctor's appointments. Um, I keep him on his medications. Medications is very um, very needed on, on dialysis. Um, just having the support of the family is, is, is key. Hi, I'm Glenn Hayashida. I'm the CEO of the National Kidney Foundation of Hawaii. One of the many challenges that our state faces is that we are losing the war against chronic kidney disease. Over the years, the number of people on dialysis has more than doubled um, in the last 10 years or so. Uh, when I first came to the National Kidney Foundation in 1995, there were less than 1,000 people on dialysis. Uh, today, and there are more than 2,700 people. So the National Kidney Foundation, one of what we're trying to do is screen and identify as many people as possible so that they understand 
that they are on a path to kidney failure. And so that we can identify people with CKD or chronic kidney disease. You know, we mentioned, we talk a lot about risk factors. We talk about people who have diabetes, people who have hypertension, and that combination is a perfect recipe for kidney failure. Um, the worst possible thing that could happen is that you have CKD and you don't know it, and there are no symptoms. By the time you have symptoms, which you know include the puffiness under your eyes and swelling of your limbs and fingers, uh, swelling of um, some pain in your lower back and frequent urination at night, uh, by that time it means their kidneys have failed. And it's really too late to do anything. And really you're heading on a course to uh, needing dialysis. Um, so we really encourage people, especially the people of our state, because for whatever reason, people of ethnic minorities, the Filipino population, the Native Hawaiians, uh, Pacific Islander population groups, they are at the highest risk of kidney failure and kidney disease. So we encourage people with diabetes, hypertension, if you're Filipino, if you're Native Hawaiian, um, to get screened and to know whether or not uh, you have chronic kidney disease. So if you or anyone that you know would like to have a kidney screening or have any questions about kidney disease, please contact the National Kidney Foundation of Hawaii at 593-1515 or visit our website at www.kidneykidnehi.org. That's kidneyhi.org.